You are welcome to this overview of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, Jesus' Eschatology. Those living in the Greco-Roman world were accustomed to long stories, poems, and discourses presented in a non-chronological manner. In an attempt to analyze Jesus' discourse, we shall try to discover the ways in which the author seeks to create meaning for his intended hearers or readers. To do this, we must identify the speaker, the hearers, any translator, editor, and readers, plus their purpose, techniques, and habits. Then take note of discourse markers, words, phrases, and forms that indicate internal logic and flow of thought. This may permit us to discern literary devices used to signal space, time, events, persons, objects, style, and relationships. Lastly, we must translate the text into another language using the latter language's own discourse styles and techniques. Thus, we shall not begin with a preconceived eschatology but seek to discern Jesus' own preview of coming events. First, let's look at the structure of the passage itself. It begins with two queries. When will certain things happen, and what will be the sign preceding? Jesus replies that hearers must endure, awaiting Jerusalem's destruction. Then he turns to coming signs and a future sign, for that present generation, reminding them to pray to escape and be ready for Jesus' return. A few notes on the background. Other Jews also predicted that the temple would be destroyed, but they did not know when. Jesus mixes his own predictions about the near or soon destruction of Jerusalem and his far future return to earth from heaven. Thus, while reading through the passage, we must discern when he is talking about each. The destruction of Jerusalem and of the temple would occur around the year 70 CE, about 37 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. About a century later, Rabbi Akiba claimed that Bar Kokhba was the Messiah during the Second Jewish Revolt. As Jesus predicted, the war with Rome would begin in the year 66 CE and continue after the fall of Masada in 72 CE. Since then, several different Gentile nations have captured and ruled over Jerusalem as to this day. Our analysis results in seven content clusters. First, answering when will these things happen, secondly, noting that the end time will not come right away, before this certain other things, including wrath against this people, then Jerusalem surrounded by armies, warning them lest the day close upon them, and then describing the end time. First then, when will these things happen? Jesus discussing with his disciples. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, As for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left upon another, every one of them will be thrown down. These gifts included, for example, the temple's golden gates, which were contributed by a rich donor. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign that they are about to take place? In reply to when, Jesus will lay out a mixed near-future and far-future chronology. A sign is any omen or portent perceived to give evidence of a future event or of a hidden reality. And the sign will be answered when Jesus says, you will see. 
there were actually three queries. In Luke 21, verse 4, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? Matthew 24, 3 supplies, what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answers all three. Second cluster, the end will not come right away. Now, over the centuries, many have risen claiming to be the Messiah. Jesus replied, Watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming, I am he and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Now, those who say, I am he, give rise to a false religion. Whereas those saying the time is near are often overly enthusiastic Christians. Remember that the end of the present age will only be the start of a new age, not the end of the physical world. Cluster 3. Before all this. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or to contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. So stand firm and you will win your life. Words of wisdom will be given to reply to accusers. These will be revealed by the Holy Spirit when needed. They will hate you because of me. Make sure it is not because of your bigotry or any criminal act. They will put some to death. Contrast this with Jesus' promise, you will win life. Cluster 4 wrath against this people. Then said he to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. For this is the time of punishment in fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be a great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Be careful, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that the day will close on you suddenly as a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. The wrath is that of Rome, who came and slaughtered hundreds of thousands. This is described in detail by the first century historian Flavius Josephus in his book, The Jewish War, written in about the year 75 CE. This people were Israelites in all the provinces of the land. Translated the whole earth, the Greek here rather says the whole land, meaning all of Israel. Cluster 5, Jerusalem surrounded by armies. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the city get out, and let those in the country not enter the city. 
Jerusalem again is surrounded by armies. Jesus continued, Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all those things have happened. This generation was those who were alive and listening to Jesus. Armies, in this case, were Roman legions under Titus Caesar Vespasian. Most Roman troops were not Roman, but rather recruited from surrounding territories, in this case from Edom, Moab, Ammon, and Arabia, peoples who violently hated Israelites. The times of the Gentiles... Remember, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem remains under Gentile occupation to this day. Cluster 6, that day will close on you. Many countries are familiar with famine. But in that day, the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint in terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. The world, literally the nations, as we await the advent of Messiah. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Signs, in this case fearful events that point to something else. To what? The world, literally the peoples or ethnicities, and the Son of Man, the one predicted in Daniel chapter 7, which reads, In my vision, there before me was one like a Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. And finally will come the end. This is when the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled, no longer trampling Jerusalem. Then the Son of Man will arrive with power and great glory and will occur your redemption, after which heaven and earth will pass away. The times of the Gentiles, we understand, began with the Babylonian captivity in the 6th century BCE, continuing until Messiah's advent yet to come, described in Revelation 19.15. Your redemption includes Israel's final deliverance from Gentile nations, but includes the resurrection of the dead, after which heaven and earth will be made new and merged together. So, in the year 33, the Jerusalem temple still stood, but after Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and the proclaiming of his gospel, many were allowed to testify before kings and governors. But then in 66 occurred the Roman invasion, which eventually surrounded Jerusalem, destroying the temple in the year 70. Later, there would be a second revolt under the leadership of Bar Kokhba. These days, we are waiting the sign of the Son of Man appearing in the sky following which will come the redemption, the first resurrection. What did you discover from this passage? What truths could you affirm? What promises could you claim? And what commands will you obey? Your assignment for next time is to read Luke chapter 22, and then visit the website for other materials, and as you do so, 
compile your insights, queries, and observations to share with others.